down a dirty road Started out all alone And the sun went down Is across the hill And the town lit up The world got Malaspina Strait, Camel Lake, Lois Lake. It's the hardest thing. Duck Lake, for the good old days. Haslam Lake, may not return. Inland Lake, Powell Lake, and Cranberry Lake, Sliamon Lake, Powell River and Dam, Georgia Strait, and the Malaspina burn. Strait, Courtney Airport, Comox Airport well, and Air Force Texana Island. To land an amphibian. But I ain't got wings Coming down Is the hardest thing submitted an application to the Transport Canada. Jesus, I hope he's okay. Um, I just recently submitted my application for registration to Transport Canada. Hopefully I'll hear back from them pretty soon and uh, they'll provide me the registration papers for the plane which are needed for the final inspection and I've uh, applied uh, already and been accepted for the final inspection. I just got to find out who the inspector is going to be communicate with him, set up an appointment for the final inspection. I already have my fuel flow report ready to give him when he comes. I have my weight and balance report ready to give him when he comes. And then there's also something about um, the plane's logbook entries. Uh, I've ordered the blank logbook from Aircraft Spruce. Unfortunately, it's on back order. Got to get that here or a reasonable facsimile of it so I can make some entries into that logbook to do with things like uh, the transponder, the pitot tube system. I have to make notations in there that these have all been checked out and, and, and verified. That's a, a document that's also required for the final inspection. Anyway, uh, and then there's a bunch of things like uh, cleaning up the, the plane uh, and making it all ship shape and then getting rid of all the hanger rash marks on the fabrics. I have a repair kit coming from Aircraft Spruce uh, so I can touch up the, uh, the dope and the fabric. Okay, let's get to it. 
Morning, Dale. Well, I had a little break in the uh, the flow of the action there. Um, hangar mate across the way from me just showed up, and his canopy's jammed on his. Am I being filmed? Plant. Yeah, it's okay. Most of it ends up in the editing bin. <laughs> <laughs> his canopy was jammed so we were together working on trying to uh, lever open the canopy uh, the latches seem to have failed so he um, is just visiting today he's pairing his that plane down to his other plane in Langley on the Fraser River uh, so he didn't have any tools so I lent him screwdrivers and odds and ends and WD-40 and eventually we we got the canopy open and uh, He's got a, a temporary plastic bar that spans his canopy that he'll use to, when he gets to Langley, to keep it jammed open so it doesn't jam shut on him. Anyway, so an interlude in the flow. Lots of fun at the airport. And there he goes. <laughs> well, that took the first... Uh, 45 minutes out of my work day, but lots of fun. Those magnificent men in their flying machines, they go up to the up, up they go down to the down, down. They enchant all the ladies and see all the scenes with their up to the up, up and their down to the down, down. Up, up and down, flying around, looping the loop and defying the ground. They can fly upside down with their feet in the air They don't think of danger, they really don't care uh -uh. Newton would think he had made a mistake yeah. To see those young men and the chances they take Those magnificent men in the flying machines They go up to the up, up, they go down to the down, down they enchant all the ladies and see all the scenes With their up to the up, up, and their down to the down, down Up, down, flying around Looping the loop and defying the ground Up, down, they're frightfully keen Those magnificent men in their flying machines Up, down, flying Beard of Mackenzie is looking really good today. Just gave her a good soaking, fresh water, loosen up the grit and dust. And then I washed her with a, sort of a bleach water, all in uh, preparation for repairing some of the rips and tears in the polyfiber fabric that covers all the flying surfaces, you know, the 10 years of the build, she's been in and out of hangars, and banged up here and there, uh, for instance here, a bit of a rub, you can see right through the uh, outer coating, spray coating, uh, into the, actually right down to metal right here, so I'm going to have to put tape across that, and then uh, the different layers of the different spray applications, which I'll, I'll brush on. Anyway, just cleaning her up and uh, fixing up all the little nicks and gouges so that she looks real good when the uh, inspector does show up, hopefully in the next month. So, there's the box, the repair kit that came from Aircraft Spruce. I'm going to be following the uh, instructions, the manual for making repairs. This is the poly fiber company manual so what did I get in the box well I got a brush 99 cent brush I've got some tape which I'll put on the uh, edge of the aileron uh, I don't think I'll need this this is some cloth if we're making a bigger repair like in the surface of a wing for instance okay so you start with the poly uh, it's the mech <laughs> methyl ethyl ketone that's the cleaning agent 
Then this poly tack is the fabric cement for uh, gluing the fabric, or in my case, the tape in place. And then you shrink that on with an iron, a calibrated iron. And that poly brush is the orange looking coating. Oh, and the poly brush and the poly spray, you reduce it with the poly fiber reducer. So poly brush goes on first, and that's the orange colored uh, coating. And then the poly spray is the aluminum coating. Also in the uh, box, I got some emery cloth or emery wet, wet, wet or dry paper. Okay, and I bought myself some some gloves. Okay, let's give her a try. Okay, so there's the the tape in place, held in with the poly tack glue. I'll just let that dry put on well, I guess I gotta iron it I'm actually not sure if I'm supposed to iron just the tape but it won't hurt to put 250 degrees of heat on it smooth it out before I put on the orange colored poly brush and then the silver colored poly spray here's here's my handy dandy little iron for heat shrinking the tape So where am I in getting this 10 year build completed and getting the uh, Spirit of Mackenzie, which is still just a bloody lawn ornament into an actual uh, flying machine? Well, those of you that have been following along in this year's episodes know that in February, I made up a task list of about uh, I think 28 items here that I had to get accomplished I hope to do it in, uh, by the middle of June of this year uh, so that I could get the inspection done by the Transport Canada representative, the inspection that would grant me my uh, certificate of airworthiness. And I estimated that I could spare four hours a week. Um, to get these tasks accomplished and I estimated how long each of the 28 tasks would take and uh, that came out to about 80 hours. That meant I should have been finished in about the middle of June. So where am I now? Well, almost all the tasks um, have been accomplished. There, I think there's five left to go. Um, more importantly though, perhaps, is did I put in the time I needed to do uh, to get these these jobs done. And what I've been doing is tracking my hours as I've been doing for the whole 10 years. I, like I, I've been tracking my hours every hour that I've had hands-on tools uh, building this plane over the last 10 years. And in, specifically over the last uh, six months in this year, uh, I've been charting how many hours a week I put in knowing I had to put in 80 hours to get these tasks done. Estimated 80 hours. Well, you can see on the chart that for the first couple of months, uh, I did really good. The gray line is the cumulative estimated hours and the yellow line is the actual hours I put in. And you can see they pretty much match each other for the first couple of months. And then my yellow line, my actual time spent on the build fell off and that's because well 
the weather wasn't so good, which is a real demotivating factor of working in an outdoor hangar. But probably more importantly, I got uh, nailed with some um, asthma attacks. I ended up in the uh, hospital emergency ward a couple of times in, uh, in May and uh, early June. And that obviously hit me quite hard and set me back on my heels, so I didn't put much time in. But once I got through this asthma thing and got it under control and the weather turned to the, to the good, I put in a lot of time and I, by the, uh, let's see what I got here, by the end of June, I had got my 80 hours in, um, but unfortunately with a few tasks left to go, which is not unusual when you're trying to estimate a job, how long it'll take. So anyway, I've uh, got quite a bit done. What's left to be done is uh, getting the bloody radio operational, the transponder, which shouldn't be uh, as much of a problem, get that operational. Certainly once I figure out the radio, the transponder should be easy. Uh, making the ELT operational, that should happen very quickly. It's basically a self-contained package. I've got to calibrate the magnetic compass. The On the dashboard of the plane, there is a steampunk style uh, magnetic compass. I got to calibrate that and at the same time calibrate the compass that's in the Dynon EFA system and that should be relatively easy to do uh, given that the Dynon manual is so good and just sort of steps you through it. It may not be the final calibration but it'll certainly be a calibration good enough uh, to pass the inspection and uh, to make the bloody uh, warning light go out on the Dynon that it's not calibrated. Uh, I got a few miscellaneous tasks, these just keep cropping up, but there's nothing significant left now. And then I got to run up the engine again, which I've kind of been doing uh, every now and again anyway, run it up and make sure that the uh, uh, that it runs uh, at a good idle speed, 1800 RPM, that it at 5800 RPM, the max RPM, the takeoff RPM, that the prop pitch is right and uh, then taxi around the airport a little bit and test the brakes and check out all the different systems. And, that, and that's it, not, not a lot. There's, there's four or five tasks left to do. So uh, as this exercise of making a list and charting my progress been useful? Well, yeah, it has. It's made me constantly aware of how much I've got left to do given me a feeling of accomplishment when I've got things stroked off the list and, and that's important because you got to keep your motivation up on these on this sort of a thing and it makes me aware of what's left to be done and um, and it also motivates me when I see that I'm not putting in the time that I need to put in to get this job done it's a bit of a, a kick in the arse to get going get something accomplished otherwise it's just going to drag on and on and um, i'm really happy where i am right now um, i expect to get my registration papers any day now i expect to uh, set the appointment for the transport canada inspector to come any day now and uh, things are looking good Today, Elaine's working on the fit and finish, making sure all the carpet is properly Don't secured. Me, Don't put you in the videos? Thank okay. You. All right. That's all, folks.